HISD and other public school districts are required by law to provide educational services for those with special needs. However, after they leave high school, it's tough to find a place for special needs adults. A nonprofit agency called the Housing Entrepreneurship and Readiness Training Program, or simply the HART program, is serving that need. I love HART. It's so fun. It's um, it's a vent, it's a training program, and we do vending, and concessions like at Toyota, Reliant, and Minute Maid. We also go to other places that have our vending machines, which is snack, which also includes snack machines and ice cream machines. Okay, all right. And what is your specific job? What do you, what, um, what do you usually do? I you. When we go on runs, I usually do vending, like do the soda, but they let me do the snack machine, okay. so that's fun too. Educational Programs Inspiring Communities is a nonprofit organization that was started in 2002 to provide job training and education opportunities for people with low incomes. Okay. In 2005, we started the HEART program, which is specifically aimed at adults with developmental disabilities and the HEART program provides education, job training, and jobs to special needs adults following high school. Uh, and what, what you, you've already identified your clients, who your clientele is, kind of thing, whatever, but what specifically do you guys do in a typical day at HEART program? Well, here at the HEART program, we try to provide real-world job environments for our participants. So whether they're here in the facility or they're going out in the community with us, we expose them to real job settings, um, both classroom, hands-on with vending machines and concession stands, um, with inventory, with money, and all of those other skills like how to talk to your supervisor or how to talk to your coworkers. All of that is part of the HEART program. We focus on two types of job training, vending machines and concession stands. With the vending machine training, it encompasses everything from learning how to put the sodas and snacks into the machines and take the money out and count it, but it also involves some inventory skills, counting, um, knowing how much product to order, knowing uh, what products to order, keeping par levels, doing some warehouse management, and also with the cash handling, when customers put dollar bills and coins into machines, our trainees take those monies out of the machine and they have to sort the coins and count them and prepare a bank deposit and take it to the bank. So there's a lot more to the vending machine training than simply putting the cans into the machines, although that's a very important aspect of the training. Someone who's in a special education program can stay in that program by law until they turn 22. And most public education, for example, HISD, are free programs for those students and their families. What happens is after 22, many of them are not ready to immediately go into the workforce. And if they're not ready to go into the workforce, they don't have a lot of other options. Either they might have to pay for some kind of a daycare program, or they might be home by themselves, or maybe one of the parents would have to quit their job to stay home and take care of their special needs adult child. What we try to provide at heart is an all-day training program that's free for the families where their child can come in here and be a student learn a skill, get some additional education, be safe and supervised the entire time. It doesn't cost them anything and their child can potentially earn some money through their work that they can then take home and help support their family. And it's, still, and it's a free program again? It's a free program. We have grants that fund the operations of the program and the teacher salaries, the rent of the facility and so on. And then the vending machines and concession stands, the money that comes from those all goes to the trainees in the form of paychecks so that they can be paid for the jobs that they're doing. One of the problems that, that we found when, when we first started the program was that as good as a vocational program a school district can have, once they leave the school district, there's nothing. You know, there's, there's very few options for them to go and the longer they stay home, the more of their skills they lose. So when we brought them in, I mean, we have some of our, some of our, uh, trainees that are that were 35 years old that hadn't had a job since they got out of high school. We got some out of right out of high school that hadn't worked while they were in high school. They might have done some vocational training 
in high school, but most of them had never had a job. So when we got them, one of the things that we had to do was train them how to work. And when they were at home, they were at home just relaxing and, as one parent put it, saving the world from aliens on their Nintendo <clears throat> and doing nothing. So getting them to a structured work day was hard. You know, a, a work day where every minute is, is focused on work, where they had to learn how to work until they got their 15 minute break and then work until they had their lunch and work till they got their afternoon break, then work till they, till they went home. Even when they were in high school, they got out at 2.30, 3 o'clock. So a structured work day was, was really hard for them. That, that was one of our biggest obstacles. I have learned a lot. I like this job very much. Do you? Why? Why do you like this job so much? It's a training job, and it's like getting you ready for a real job, like to go out for a real job. Okay. And, and do you like making a paycheck, getting paid? Yes, sir. All right. It's just like a real job, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mostly what I be doing, like I be in the inventory room, like pulling products. They give me like a schedule, my paper, mm -hmm. the inventory sheet for the um, go in the inventory room and pull out different snacks. And mostly what I get is like 10 of everything and like 15 of the Snickers. And then mostly I'll be counting money, putting laboring um, snacks, products we get from Sam's or Martian, uh, the market, and counting money and mostly cleaning up. All right. So and you like that job? Yes. You good at it? Yes. Uh, and you like working here? Yeah. Do you? Tell me, tell me what what your job is here. What 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 specific jobs do you do here? Uh, stack soda. Stack sodas. You're just, you're just soda stacking man. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> you get strong muscles from doing yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You like doing that? Yeah. Do you? Do you? And I bet you like getting that paycheck, too. Uh-huh. Tell me about that. Tell me about getting your paycheck. Uh, I got a paycheck when I went to uh, Toyota Center and uh, the Rocking Game. And uh, I went to, uh, like, uh, like Pizza Fap uh -huh. uh -huh. at Toyota Center. You like working at the Toyota Center? Yeah. You get to see them basketball games and all yeah. that kind of stuff too, huh? Yeah. All right. That's what sounds like a good job. Uh-huh. A lot of our families are very low income, and the check that the participant is receiving really determines whether they're going to be able to have electricity the rest of the month. Hmm. Um, we had one of our participants that when he got his paycheck, his mom came in to pick him up and told her, look, Mom, I have a paycheck. And uh, she said, oh, that is so good. She said, we can have light now. And, and that's a true story. You know, so a lot of them, it's not just that they're, that they're feeling like they're, they're like everybody else. It's also that they're helping out the family. And the families appreciate that also. That's our show for today. Thanks for watching. And tune in again tomorrow for another edition of HISD News Today.